Greetings, my fellow free and blow sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the L3 podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangrove, South Florida, and today's date is Monday, April 5th, 2020. And I know some places have the Easter Mondays in certain parts of the nation or the world, I would say, you know, and um, it's all well and good. But um, I know everyone had a, well, we haven't had a safe weekend. And um, you see stuff is going around. Looks like the uh, COVID 19 ordeal or the, the mask mandates, all that stuff. It's supposed to be tomorrow at the Broward County Commission's meeting. On April 6th, if you want to register, do it. I'll give you all the information right there. If you live in the Broward County area, speak your mind. It'll be via phone, which is irrelevant. It should be mainly in public. But, you know, they all believe this more than everybody else. They can't, you can't even trust themselves. And, um, yeah, so I'm just, you know, doing my thing here. And and I know I've been doing an episode here and there. But, like I said, I've just been, you know, just been doing other uh, other commitments right now. Been rec- been recruited to do a couple things to uh, liberate Briar County. You would say, you know. So, um, so so it's, it's pretty cool. So I admire that. And there's people, some folks I worked with a long time ago. They asked me to join. So I'm like, oh, I'll see what I'll just wing it. But most likely, I'll I'll be jumping on board for the principle of. Uh, Regaining the power of the people in Broward County. So, <laughs> I have to make that statement. And, um, I've been, I've been just been pretty quiet on what to watch and all that. Sometimes you gotta do a, do a, like, uh, I call it a, um, hiatus, a rest period. And don't get me wrong, because sometimes so much stuff is out there. It's like, good grief. Don't know where to go. And of course you got white privilege Biden and Bod Matters, Bod Lives Matter, Harris. Trying to do their thing. And of course everyone's worried about Washington DC and all this debacle with uh, opinions. It looks like the Supreme Court made a statement about Trump on the Twitter thing, which is pretty cool, you know, like it's just opinions, you know, and um and of course you got folks Folks may be using that whole incorporation doctrine tomorrow as well at this commission's meeting tomorrow. So um, we'll just see how far it goes. And uh, it's a item 92 to be exact on this matter. So um, go to freeflorida.me. And uh, just let everyone know, I will be, most likely I'm, I'm, I'm going to be live doing a live feed on the Million Maskless March which will start at 3 p.m. in the Fort Lauderdale Beach area, which is in along the A1A in Los Solis. All right, so it's supposed to be a nice little march and some speeches. It's going to be burning the mask. If you have your mask, hey, if you want to burn it, burn it. You know, it's all be, of course, all going to be peaceful and all, peaceable and all that. And, of course, you yeah, expect the haters to come out there with their shackles and chains. Go, yeah, I want the, I want the... Bureaucrats tell me how to live and how to breathe and how to take a dump and make love to my wife, etc. <laughs> oh, you know, it's nothing to do under the sun, but hey, but you know what? Always gotta look at the. I recommend folks don't be the haters out there. I recommend you read Broward County resolutions affirming civil rights to all to all residents of Broward County, which was passed May 6, two thousand and three. Read the whole thing before running your mouth. All right? And I do believe in freedom of choice, by the way. So I'm not going to be anti-masker. I'm just anti-conscription. There's a big difference there, folks. So uh, that's, that's why I stand on it. And, of course, there's places I'll go. If it's elderly and, uh, and the vulnerable, I'll put the mask on in good faith because that's my respect. Okay? I always... Uh, Pay homage to my elders and the people who are considered vulnerable. Will compromise hell. If they wear a mask, that's fine. But if you're going to have the state tell me how to do it, then you've got a problem. So that's how I um, look at it. So don't crucify me. Oh, you hope you get COVID and all this 
rhetoric. You know what COVID stands for? It stands for what I got from multiple sources. It stands for certification of vaccination identification. Okay, so they want you to be numbered. It looks like all the facilities in the theater industry is thinking about doing the you have to have the COVID shot to uh, work in our work in our buildings. And here's the thing, folks: they'll be violating your basic rights as an individual. Doesn't matter where you're at. All you gotta do is read your state constitutions. Okay, it's self-explanatory. And Florida's Article One, Section Two. California's Article One, Section One. Same thing in New York. Their Bill of Rights, Article One, Section One, etc. Okay. Folks, better start reading these things. Okay, instead of going, "Yes, Master, I'll do it. Give it to me, baby." No, 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 no. But the, like I said, you have those decisions. If you want to take that, take the shot. That is your choice, and others can say no. But don't harass others if they refuse. And remember, like I said before in the past, every infection has an Achilles heel. There's so many natural remedies to boost your immunity that if they get any of these viruses or infections, it'll flush right out. And I'm no... Jack Lane, for goodness sakes, okay? But my late father always told me, he always harassed the daylights. I mean, including my brothers. Be, take care of your health. So, in other words, be vigilant. And, um, because he had his uh, ordeals in the past. Because he used to live in the streets of uh, New York during the Hell's Kitchen era. Right? And Yorkville and so forth. I always keep that, always keep that in my back of my mind. And I always tell people in my even in my community, my neighbors, the same thing. You know, I'll give them all this information on natural remedies, and many of them that thank me for it. So, um, at least there's options, okay? So, I just don't want to be dictated frivolously, especially frivolously, okay? Like, like when things are necessary and hurricane watch and all that. Yeah, it's understandable. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, mainly on your own, but. I always take the initiative on being personally responsible. And a lot of people out there need to do that. And of course, people my age group still believe that the state should take care of them. Now, nah, it doesn't work like that. So, um, like I said, so I'll be doing that. You know, do a live feed. And um, I will post that on my social media sites as well as a live feed. And I'll probably do some shows, other shows before that. But it's going to be a good time, a good vibe, great spirits. And meet some like-minded people out there. And just network. Doesn't matter what your political belief is, belief system is. Is um, just go out there and just stand up for what's right, natural rights, inherited natural rights. And I know the Libertarian Party of Broward is going to be there too, supporting it as well, and that's pretty cool. So I give them the thumbs up for that as well. We need more unity. We need liberty-minded people. Doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republicans, Libertarians, Constitutional Law, uh, Constitutionalists, etc. Be have that liberty, which it means. Freedom and morality, okay? Thus, you have to observe or examine and exercise it to your greatest um, capabilities. So, without further ado, speaking of natural rights, this is an interesting article. Someone uh, shared this on Facebook, uh, Florida Carry, and it's in reference to blacks, black, black Americans owning firearms or practicing using firearms, which, is, which I'm very... I think it's beautiful, and I know they, I didn't want about in Chicago, but the Guardian sometimes they always gotta read between the lines of how they try to present these things. But um, this one here came from the Guardian, came out today, around uh, six oh, six o'clock in the morning. Okay, it says here, guns and lies. Black Americans flock to gun stores and clubs. I need it to, to protect myself. And, of course, this is written by Eben A. Clayton in Oakland, California. And the top before that says, Americans bought a record number of farms last year. Gun ownership among black Americans is up 58.2%. Very impressive. And it says here, Janice Matthews always knew she would be a gun owner someday. She raised in Alabama where her family members rarely left their home unarmed. Still... 
after more than three decades in California, she wasn't in a rush to start shopping around at, a gun, at gun stores. Then the pandemic hit. Matthew started hearing rumors of food shortages and noticed store shelves empty by shopper, pa- shoppers panic buying everything from bullets to toilet paper. Yeah, I got, I've, I've seen that in New Mexico, so good grief. After her daughter moved out of their home, she was left in an empty nest and a lot of anxiety. I was thinking of what they predicted in the Bible, and I thought I would have to protect a little bit that I had. That's Matthew's, um, she, Matthew 55 recall. So one day in the spring of last year, she waited six hours in line outside of a Northern California gun shop to become one of the millions of Americans who became first-time gun owners in 2020. All right, and it says here, this is here about guns and uh, guns and lives. Gun homicides nationwide have barely declined, but in California's Bay Area, they're down 30 percent. In this series, the Guardian investigates the initiatives that are saving lives in areas uh, scarred by rising inequality and gentrification. So I'll continue on here. Americans bought a number, a record number. Of uh, firearms last year, an estimated 5 million people bought their first gun ever between March and August, according to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, or NSSF, a trade organization. And that number continued to climb throughout the year. Black Americans saw the highest increase in new gun owners of any demographic, the NSSF. An NSSF found with gun ownership in the group by a staggering 58.2%. Though black Americans have a multitude of reasons for buying a gun. Some new gun owners told the Guardian about stress related to the pandemic. Others about the anxiety of seeing scores of armed white protesters rallying against lockdown orders or the election results. Many had a common experience in the process of obtaining one. There met with apathy and, in some cases, disrespect from white gun owners, gun club members, and at shooting ranges. I don't know where the hell you... I don't know where all these glamour hacks came from. Good grief. They could... um, Shoulder they receive has pushed scores to join black gun clubs, seek training from black experts. June 2020, when the riots were hitting different cities, my students increased, said Rogers Anderson, who was a commander of the Black Owner Black Gun Owners Association, Oakland Bay Area chapter, and conducts training sessions at Northern California shooting ranges. Now, 99.9% of my students are either single black women or black women with children who are fearful for their safety, Anderson said. Janice, Janice uh, Matthews is one of the Anderson's trainees. On the morning of 18 January, Martin Luther King Day, Junior Day, Matthews and her friend Robin Lewis drove an hour to the Richmond Rod and Gun Club for a new beginner shooting lesson. Session, excuse me. The duo joined a pair of veteran trainers and five other novices firearm users, all but one black. They spent the morning in a small field carved into a maze looking um, shooting range, f- um, filling cardboard targets with bullets from pistols and shotguns. They practiced aiming in small pockets of semi-enclosed space on the terrain, and lined up side by side to practice their stance, with um, Anderson correcting first-timers' finger placement before telling the class to pull the trigger. Matthews has sought out the training after being utterly disappointed last March when picking up her weapon, a a 9mm handgun, selected on the recommendation of her brother. She found the store's clerk to be unfriendly, rushing her her out out without showing her basic skills like locking and loading the gun. Okay, so that's not that's not that's a bad master. Okay, so if that's the case, you can't have you can't have teachers like that. I don't give I don't give a damn if they're wider than me with the same surname. It's irrelevant. Okay, or unacceptable. That'd be the word. I didn't feel any comfort once I bought the gun because gun brought the gun home because I don't know. What I was doing, she said. I couldn't pull it out because if I did, the person would use it on me. It's a fear. Her friend, Robin Lewis, said she had a uh, fear of guns ever since her brother was murdered in 2000. She went to the training on a whim. Guns brought back traumatic triggers. I never had, I had never handled one, and I had a fear of no, of 
the unknown at first, Lewis said. During the training in Richmond, she fired handguns and rifles in the class, which was half men and half women. Just looking at the world and all that's going on, I knew I needed to protect myself. Lewis continued, I didn't know shooting could be a hobby, but it's all about learning. The less you know, the more you fear it. And that's good. I like that. Once she gets more training under her belt, she wants to buy a 9mm handgun. Education from someone who looks like me. Black gun ownership, sometimes referred to as the black tradition of arms, has seen many iterations. After the American Civil War, newly freed black people formed militias to defend themselves against white supremacist violence. Into the mid-20th century, civil rights activists such as Megger Evers and Martin Luther King Jr. were known to carry guns and groups like the Deacon for Defense in the South and Black Panthers wielded their firearms publicity as part of their activism. In recent months, black gun owners with groups like the no effing around coalition or NAFC have marched with long gun slugs, long gun slug, slung across their chest and handguns visible to the holsters during the protests over COVID-19 restrictions and demonstrations demanding justice for George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And I gotta be very honest, I was not impressed with them, with their leadership and all that. So, and I'll just carry on. All right. Guns have continued to fly over, fly off store shelves amid unrest following Donald Trump's election defeat and the lingering pain around killings of Americans, such as Ahmaud Arbery, who was shot and killed while on the run through a Georgia neighborhood. In times of uncertainty, people want to be able to have means to defend themselves, said Robert J. Cotro, a um, Law professor at George Washington University. People worry that they're not being um, protected and they'll have to do it themselves. Fear of crime and being a hobby are not mutually exclusive. And the police are not always able to protect you, he added. And uh, I'll just stop there because technically the police aren't obligated to protect you as an individual. And, um, And you can look up whatever state jurisdiction you're at. Look up sovereign immunity and tort liability. Okay, even if I'm correct, George Washington University is in D.C. If that's the case, or Maryland or Virginia, just look it up. It's um very, it's it's um it's a fact. So I'll continue on. Nathan Adams, a 46 year old Northern California business owner, said he supported California's strict gun laws before the 2020 election, but the intense focus on entrenched racism and police led him to conclude that some law enforcement, some extremist groups, are one and the same. People are tired of this stuff me included. And if, if buying firearms is the route we have to go down to make sure that things don't get shady over my taillight, then so be it, Adams said after a session on the Richmond training ground. None of the traditional groups were all that appealing. They're always defending the Second Amendment unless it comes down to a minority, then they're crickets. Well, you never, you never hung out with me. <laughs> I didn't want to give, give my membership dollars to them, he continued. I would rather get an education from someone who looks like me instead of someone who says, let me help this boy, echoed Delon Atkins, who attended trainings alongside Adams and said he'd begun dabbling in firearms at the beginning of the pandemic. I experienced that and didn't like it. Being in an environment where I'm the only black person made me want to put up my shield and armor up. Fear, fear, fear is more like that. The whole thing is, folks, you got to always, you know, whoever is learning the farm, doesn't matter what they look like and who they are, give them that love and support, you know, and give them the words of the wise. All right? And I'm, I've always been like that to everyone, too. And um, so mainly white conservative groups such as the NRA National Rifles Association have dominated the Second Amendment conversation since the late 1990s and into the new millennium. And, um, just, yeah, it's cause funny because they, they started, actually they started trying to, they, they taught people free blacks as well from the very beginning in New York and how to shoot and so forth. Tired of the NRA's failures to reach out to black, to, to black communities and vilification of slain black gun owners. Black gun owners formed their own infinity group like BGOA and the National African-American Gun Association, or NAGA, 
to encourage other black Americans to embrace their own firearms and educate them on gun safety. Their membership only grew and made killings like the one of Valdando Castile in Minnesota and Alton Sterling in Louisiana. The value of these groups is learning with people who know your struggle and understand what's happening and has been happening with, with this country. And Anubis Haru, the owner of the 1770 Armory and Gun, Gun Club, Denver, Colorado, first black-owned firearm store and simulator range. Black people and women of color like to come to our facility because we're not typical rednecks. Redneck with the tattoos of the three percenters. <laughs> Hey, John Armistead, you can say he's one of the three percenters, he, and he was a a black man too, the, a, a black man that fought for the for the Americans, and there's a great amount of them that did that too. Just to let you folks know, that's just just an example. I had a laugh; that was funny. Bigot, bigot, bigot. Got you sarcasm here, right? Why would it? Why would you want the racists to be the only ones with knowledge of firearms? Echoed Maj Tor. Founder of the Black Guns, Black Guns Matter, a firearms uh, education program aimed at new gun owners in the urban communities across the U.S. The seed was in the ground already, so when COVID happened, there was fertile soil for us to reach Black people and teach them basic firearm safety. There is empowerment. Geneva and Jonathan Solomon opened their Los Angeles gun store, Redstone Firearm, in 2016. They were met with appreciation from people who were jaded by their experiences with other gun store owners. The couple said, especially as the pandemic worsened and civil unrest and racist strife became more prevalent, they reached racist message. They they received racist racist messages and threats since the store's opening, though, and the abuse has escalated through months of racial tension and social unrest. They have even struggled to retain vendors once they discovered that the Solomons are black. Run to the hills! Yeah, I love using sarcasm here, folks. Good grief! You know? We continually get that threats. We get phone calls and emails saying, you Negroes, and I say that out of love, but the more racial epithets on that, okay, shouldn't be selling guns. So the Negroes, but the more slur version of it. They try to treat, talk about degenerates, okay? So Jonathan Solomon said, I don't think it's going to stop, especially as more groups see that black people are going to start shooting back and won't be easy targets anymore. Hey, I say, hell yeah, good for them. I love it, you know? I love to see everyone... Um, Defend themselves. There's a natural right, regardless of your race, color, creed, etc. Okay, regardless of your ethno backgrounds, everyone has that right. It's a human, natural, inherent right. Okay, inherent natural right. So that's a fact. And even if you go to California, Article One, Section One is self-explanatory. Doesn't say the right to keep and bear arms, but your natural rights are inalienable. I'm just paraphrasing. Even with the racism they face, the Solomons say their business is, is growing, especially as more people learn that they are black-owned. They hope that once the spread of COVID ebbs and raise attention is cool, black Americans will begin to participate in shooting competitions and have a greater presence throughout the industry. I really hope that gun owners who bought them on a whim and aren't really interested sell, 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 sell their guns, but for those who truly want to grow from beginner to intermediate, I want them to keep in momentum. Geneva Solomon said, I want to see more black people get more comp into competitive shooting. I want to see more family bonding around it. Solomon's particularly impressed with the rise in gun ownership among black women. It's amazing that black women are having these conversations and are making these decisions for themselves. She said, there is maybe an undertone of fear, but there's also empowerment to say we're not going to punk, you're not going to punk me. Janice Matthews has enjoyed training among other black people and hope to also shoot with all the black female cohort. Having gotten to grips with her handgun, she's now, she now plans to build her own rifle. 
Beautiful. I like that. She was deeply saddened by the recent high-profile mass shooting in Boulder, Colorado, and Orange, California, she said, and was especially angered by the racial implications of the murders in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't like racism and all the shoot. That shooting definitely made me mad, Matthew said. She wanted to continue her own training she added to develop as a responsible gun owner. Nathan, um, Nathan Adams and says she planned to continue to attend BGOA training and more to be more involved with the group. Early his gun ownership, early in his gun ownership, he wondered if people would begin to stereotype him when he posted pictures with his firearm to social media. Amid high profile mass shootings, Adams Wondered if he and his fellow black marksmen were going to be lumped in with proud boy types. Hey, there's some, there's some, there's some African, um, black, um, African, African descent, descent individuals, Americans, okay, including, um, Enrique, Enrique Terrell, which he's a, he's, he was a born in Miami, Florida, Africa, Afro Cuban descent. So it's not just only white people that are proud boys, okay? So I, I know that for a fact, okay? So people are going to put their own spin on it, and as part of the community that's used to being misconstrued, I can't concern myself with, with that. Adam said, we know why we're doing this, and his safety is our number one concern. Of course, the names of the gun, new gun owners in this story have been changed to protect their identity. I'll be very honest. I like this. Sometimes maybe the article may be a little dramatic. That's fine. But the people with the brainwashing propaganda, the mainstream news media, get these people to think. But one thing I always give these beautiful individuals homage because they, they're learning something. And they've been conditioned, many of them, okay, of the laws of no, like, um, like certain firearms weren't allowed for for uh for, um blacks okay rather they're slaves slaves free mulattoes they weren't out on farms in certain states like in Florida Georgia Louisiana Maryland okay and I believe Pennsylvania as well so some of the northern states did the same thing many many years ago and of course they had the, even the seventeen 1792 of the militia of the militia act which is um i find it very disturbing as well because that's considered a valid contract everyone's in the militia to join the militia doesn't matter what their creed is what their what their ethno background is okay so um i I always find that disturbing as well yeah gun control is racist period there's some racist roots in that and um i'm gonna add Again, no guns for Negroes for the first time listeners out there. I'm going to add that video to um, to to, the, to these footnotes because everyone needs a right to know the dark side about what the Jim Crow laws, even w- way before eighteen the eight the eighteen seventies. All right, so Jim Crow laws been around for a long time. So um, doesn't matter what what doesn't matter what state it is, but definitely I'm I'm very pleased. To see this happening and keep the momentum going. Because remember one thing for sure: as Americans, we are all minorities based on based on our ethnicity. And it's nothing. And I'm not ashamed to say it either. Let's honor one another. Give each other a hand. We all we we'll never never stop learning, including firearm safety, which is everyone's responsibility. Period. That will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share this throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you want to check it out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence and decorum. Furthermore, I'll leave the footnote of this article and No Guns for Negroes 22-minute um, 20, presentation, which is very educational. And share that to everyone, even with these groups, just in case, okay? Because it is important to, to we can all learn from this, all right? And if you want to um, contact me, you can email me at lokiluckenumbers03 at protonmail.com. If you want to donate, you can hit me at paypal, 
cash.me or cash.app forward slash looky luck number three. And if you want to send the donations to the Guardian, so be it. It's up to you. I have my you know, pros and cons with all, with, with all these uh, new sites, but remember to always observe responsibly. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember, I said that twice now. <laughs> always remember that demonic resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.